Energy is a pretty old concept, and in order to go all the way back to the beginning, we need to travel all the way back around 2400 years to the mid-400s BC. Here, we travel to Sicily to meet our first scientist. Empedocles theorized that everything was made up of four elements, earth, water, air, and fire. As we know today, there are a few more elements than these four. However, these four elements line up almost exactly with the states of matter. There are four states of matter. Yes, four. These states are solid, liquid, gas, and plasma, and they each have specific traits that make each of them very different from the others. In solids, particles are very close together. They are so close together that they can't freely move and they can only vibrate. This causes solids to have a definite shape and volume. Liquids are the next energy level up. On this level, particles are further apart, which causes the substance to have the ability to change shapes to fill whatever container it's in. On the third energy level are gases. Particles and gases are so energized that they have the ability to change their volume to completely fill whatever container they are in. The fourth state is plasma, and probably the most misunderstood of the four. Plasma is similar to gases since they both have an indefinite shape and volume, but unlike gases, they can conduct electricity, produce magnetic fields and electric currents, and have a high responsiveness to electromagnetic forces. Well, even though that sounds really complicated, it's actually pretty simple. In order for a gas to become a plasma, it needs to be heated to extremely high temperatures. When this occurs, the electrons essentially leave the atom and the substance becomes composed of several atomic nuclei within a sea of electrons. In this state, the substance has similar properties to metallic bonds, which makes it electrically conductive. Even though it seems like plasma wouldn't exist on Earth, there are several examples, including lightning, fluorescent lights, neon lights, and plasma TV. This theory was accepted for a long while after that and was used by another scientist in Greece who built upon it and introduced the modern version of the word energy. Aristotle took Empedocles' theory of the four elements and added a fifth element, ether. This theory seemed to explain what they called divine substances. These divine substances are heavenly bodies that, thanks to modern science, have new names stars, and planets. He later wrote a book called Nicomachean Ethics. In this book, he used the word... Um... That's better. He used the word energia, which is the Greek word that energy is derived from. He used the word to describe motion, and for the most part, he got it right. After their research concluded, there was a huge gap in history that had very little progress in the field from. It wasn't until 1676 when... Godfrey discovered that total energy would be conserved within a system. This theory, which he called vis viva, which is Latin for living force, was unique for its time because it was the first time in history that the theory of the law of conservation of energy had a formula. Side note, even though Gottfried was the first to create a formula for this law, he wasn't the first to attempt to create the law of conservation of energy. This title goes to... Gottfried's formula was mv squared, where m equaled mass and v equaled velocity. This formula probably looks similar to another formula you might recognize. Like this one, for kinetic energy. During this same time period, there was a rivaling scientist that worked in the same field as Gottfried, but had a very different theory. This scientist worked in England, as opposed to Gottfried, who worked in Germany, and their theories often clashed. This scientist's name was... Surprise! This is part one of our two-part History of Our Tech premiere. Tune in next time when we reveal our mysterious scientist and come to the States for some more scientists.